Climate activists are pushing hard for green solutions, but among their proposals are some authoritarian measures that could even lead to people losing their land. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Climate change. Many see it as humanity's biggest threat, but in some people's rush to find solutions, they're willing to go to extreme lengths. You see, the problem is people aren't doing enough to fight climate change. So the government has to force them to make change. Which is why scientist James Lovelock says it may be necessary to put democracy on hold for a while. And one way to put democracy on hold is through eminent domain. You own land. Land that really would be better suited to having solar panels or wind turbines, don't you think? But the companies that make these green technologies can't just take away any land they want. They have to get permits at the local, state, and federal levels. And sometimes voters don't want to give up their land to save the planet. Like when Maine voters rejected a $950 million power line for hydro imports. Or consider Cape Wind, a controversial offshore wind farm that would have been the U.S.'s first in Massachusetts. It was first proposed in 2001. But after 16 years of protest from local and tribal groups, developers pulled the plug. Don't these selfish people know they'll all die in a climate apocalypse if they don't give these companies their land? Even states that are pushing hard for renewable energy are facing backlash. New York saw lots of protests against wind turbines outside the Niagara Falls Air Base. Even in California in 2019, San Bernardino County slammed the brakes on big solar projects located on more than one million acres of private property. And more recently, California's Central Coast residents have been pushing back on offshore wind. Now there's a variety of reasons why voters are challenging these green projects. All of them are wrong. So what's the solution? Well, some climate conscious people think authoritarianism is the answer to their problems. Why? tell you after the break. Welcome back. Scientist James Lovelock wants to put democracy on hold, and unfortunately, this isn't some small fringe perspective. Former NASA official James Hansen reportedly considered Americans barbarians with a fossil money democracy compared to the enlightened Chinese, unfettered by pesky elections. Hansen even went on record with The Guardian to praise China, calling it rational on climate change. China is rational on climate change. China has more carbon emissions than the rest of the developed world combined. But you know what the Chinese government can do? Seize people's land. And that's what climate activists want everywhere. A Cambridge University article argues that authoritarian regimes are more successful in implementing climate policies, citing how some have become global leaders in solar and wind energy, as well as batteries and EVs. It argues governments need to resort to authoritarian measures like the ones implemented during COVID, which have been totally successful. There were only a few minor cases of people starving to death under lockdown. The article complains about how protests, free speech, and individual autonomy get in the way of even the smallest climate change initiatives. The article concludes that the climate emergency may legitimate resorts to authoritarianism. It goes on to list some possible solutions, including governments compelling citizens to make significant lifestyle changes, such as curbing meat-heavy diets. You will eat the bugs and you will be happy. The article also leaves open the idea of censorship to prevent climate denialism or disinformation, as well as limiting certain democratic institutions and processes to implement environmental policies. And of course, some climate alarmists are taking Cambridge ideas to heart, which is why seizing private land is the next step in the fight against climate change. More after the break. Welcome back. To fight climate change, some powerful and influential climate activists want the government to use eminent domain. Eminent domain, also known as compulsory acquisition, is a legal power that allows the government to seize privately owned land for public use. This is typically used for things that are important for public interest, such as roads, supply, water, defense readiness, and parks. America's founding fathers knew this could easily be abused. Which is why the Fifth Amendment in the U.S. Constitution states that private property can't be taken for public use without just compensation. But what about when the world is facing a climate catastrophe? Economist Daryl Fairweather says 
In the coming decades, we will need eminent domain more than ever to overcome the challenge of climate change. According to a professor at Vermont Law School, eminent domain is critical to building a green, sustainable grid. Lots of other intellectuals agree with this sentiment. According to this professor at the University of Minnesota Law School, states should consider eliminating eminent domain rights for fossil fuel projects and extending eminent domain rights for certain clean energy projects as part of their state climate policies. Eminent domain is a valuable incentive governments grant to the private sector to build energy-related projects. You know, I wonder if these intellectuals imagine that it's their land they'll be losing. But it's not just these climate activists who like the idea of eminent domain. Guess who else does? Massive corporations! Among them is J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon. He told shareholders early in 2023 how, to expedite progress, governments, businesses, and non-governmental organizations need to align across a series of practical policy changes that comprehensively address fundamental issues that are holding us back, even if it means evoking eminent domain. Not just finance companies, carbon capture companies are especially fans of this approach. Although they push for voluntary agreements, those like Navigator CO2 Ventures and Summit Carbon Solutions applied for eminent domain and allegedly threatened to use eminent domain on those who wouldn't agree to sign voluntary agreements. It'd be a real shame if something happens to your shop. At least the mob throws in a free cannoli. Some states are already taking steps to make seizing property in the name of fighting climate change a reality. Michigan recently voted to strip local municipalities of standard zoning approval over large wind and solar projects to meet its goal of not emitting climate warming gases by 2024. Democrats framed the legislation as a win for private property rights, which would give farmers flexibility to diversify their land usage without being halted by a local elected board that may be under pressure from renewable power opponents. I mean, it really is great for property owners. Where else can you get your land so easily liberated by the government? But according to a Republican state senator, this and other bills allow state governments to bulldoze their way into city halls across the state and claim, we know best. The problem with giving the government this kind of power is that we don't even know how much of an impact these green initiatives will have on the climate. Despite claims otherwise, the science is far from settled. And I have a video I want to show you about that. But first, remember, they're talking about censoring anyone who challenges the climate narrative. America Uncovered is in danger. To keep this show going, I need your support on patreon.com slash America Uncovered. All it takes is a dollar an episode and you can set a monthly limit. Click on that orange button to head over to Patreon. And here's that video I want to show you about how climate alarmists are more than willing to squash dissent. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.